Regardless, uh, yeah, we were not casting these games yesterday when they were first made public. I couldn't make it, so I am casting these now. And yeah, NBL is playing with Cheetahs and Delta is playing with Cummins. I was just talking about the civilizations uh, a little, and NBL specifically, he gets a civilization over here that's going to be highly regarded as a strong arena civilization. It's the the better one between these two. Meanwhile, Doubt Civilization, on the other hand, um, with Kumans, is not going to have a particularly strong arena civilization. Once again, we have talked about this many times. It's, in my opinion, more so about the players often time than it is about the civilizations in many cases. So we'll see what we get. However, for MBL Civ, starting off with Teutons, we're going to see that they get cheaper farm farms. They're going to have also 5 and 10 extra garrison capacity on towers and TCs from where villagers can... Uh, actually, not just villagers, but the, those buildings can also shoot up to 4 and 5 extra arrows. They also get free herbal medicines, free murder holes, twice the healing range on monks. And then in addition to that, 1 and 2 extra melee armor on barracks and stable units in the castle and imperial ages with a team bonus being... Uh, for Teuton's conversion resistance, which adds 1 and 2 extra range on... Sorry, 1 and 2 extra seconds are the minimum and maximum conversion times and decreases conversion chances by half. And here comes Doubt, though, with his not particularly strong arena civilization. is gonna be the one putting the most pressure. Alright. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it happens, you know? Anyway, thank you for the heads up. If it were up to me alone, I probably would have taken a, a little bit longer to realize about it. So yeah, Doubt coming forward with the trash over here is certainly interesting. Certainly interesting. And by the way, yeah, it is going to be a best of five series, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I was just taking a look at the draft. I'm going one wreck at a time, of course, so. Just making sure. Doubt in his castles. A true love story. Yeah, a tragic love story as well. It always comes at great losses. What is the wall's HP? 900 and then 1800? Yeah. Uh, it's actually a little bit higher over here, I think. I'm really sure this is... I, I think this actually got increased in one of the recent patches, if I'm not mistaken. If that's not the case, then this might just be the script. But I remember what you're saying to be true as well. So this might be a case of um, either of those things being true. Regardless, the OMBL is not going to take much longer to batter these down. A 1080p as opposed to 900 in any way he's coming in. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Simple. Uh, I thought I recalled something like that. And in case you're curious as well, these games were played in the previous patch. So before the update from two days ago. Which means we have the same old balance that we had for the rest of the qualifiers that we have had for uh, most of the tournaments we have been casting in the last two months or so, right? So... Nothing over here to worry about in terms of balance changes or different gameplay features. And Doubt? Well, Doubt really managed to break in. He's going in for potentially a third tower inside the palace walls. He's already gotten past the stone walls. And the reaction from MBL has been good, to be fair. And Doubt? That's doing a good job over here trying to prevent the villagers from getting the stone wall up. However, he won't be able to come in through the left-hand side anymore. And he needs to go ar around the right-hand side instead. He won't be able to. And BL's reaction over here is swift. And Dal realizes about the tower coming up. He knows there is no coming in. And BL, and BL is going to get away with fast castling. Now, Dal is actually buying himself some great time with this. Keep in mind that even though MBL is straight fast gasoline, while Doubt is just going for feudal boom, and he's gonna take a little bit longer to get out to the castle age, the fact that Doubt's putting pressure over here and forcing MBL to go for towers 
hurts MBL's ability to catch up and economy once it gets to the castle leech because he won't be able to go for extra TCs. He won't be able to get the villagers out and he won't be able to catch up against that for economy, right? So you take a look at this. And uh, that's already looking stronger for economy. It's got about eight extra workers and if he were to click to the castle age in the next minute or so, he would still be ahead by the time he got there because he would still be able to keep on producing villagers with one of the TCs while the other one researches the next stage. Meanwhile, MBL, as he's sticking to one TC over here, wouldn't be able to catch up to that unless he went for a second TC and then that clicked up to the castle age and that got a little bit of idle TC time. Or MBL went for two additional TCs. And then that would allow him most likely to completely catch up to that no matter what, no matter what. But that's the thing, right? That's pressure over here. Basically guaranteed that he was going to be the one ahead. Because MBL, what does he do now? He doesn't have the resources to go for any extra TC. So this was really well played from that in the end. And it seems like a very interesting strategy. We're going to find out very soon if it actually ends up working in his favor or not. But at the very least, at the beginning of the game... It seems to have worked out just fine. Students Garrison, 10 villagers, right? Is it ridiculous to tower rush for students? Not necessarily. Uh, you can just try and force a reaction from your opponent because this, the Dao did, like once again, is going to prevent MBL from going for any extra TCs. It's going to prevent him from catching up to Dao's much stronger economy right now. If Dao hadn't gone for something like that, then NBA would have straight fast castle. He could have gone for two extra TCs, potentially even a four TC. And then that second TC in the field edge wouldn't really have allowed them to get a substantial economy lead. So this is a little bit better. Now, there is a fine time window during which that will have an advantage and will be able to put pressure. And that is after he gets to the castle edge and potentially if he wants to make a play for the Imperial Age over here and kind of fast imps against NBL. If you can get a castle up, if you can get uh, some siege out, go up to the Imperial Age earlier, that's really when he's going to shine. Because the longer the game goes, and the more time MBL has to catch up over here, the better it's going to be for Teuton. So that's got to be extremely clinical about the way he goes in this game. We'll see that MBL is going to try to start putting some pressure over here. It's going to be sticking to one TC himself. And this is one of the better reactions against Cummins. And this is something that I would love to see more often than not in open map games. Just fast castle into full pressure that usually works out pretty well against against Cummins. Now we'll see if he can make it work over here when Doubt is already protected by the stone walls. Should be able to go up to the castle each himself. There we go. Hey Farbeard! Hi hi! Welcome. Long time of siege. We have the scorpions from MBL. Hey, by the way, guys, I I haven't told you, but uh, um, yesterday I actually participated in a trivia game. From a, an Argentinian YouTuber. That video is going to go up to to YouTube in the future. I'm not really sure exactly when. But if you like to take a look at it. it it's in Spanish, of course. But in any case, anybody would like to take a look at it. You'll be able to find it on Manco's YouTube channel. It was quite fun as well. So very much looking forward to, to him polishing it. Anyway, Bloodlands is coming up now for Doubt and Castle Age is going to be here very soon. Meanwhile, Nabil is taking forever, man. He's taking forever to break the walls down. And Doubt, Doubt's coating stone quite heavily. Now this, I would have liked to see him go for a little bit earlier into the game so that he would be able to go for the castle as soon as he got to the Castle Age. But yeah, he's going to need something to defend himself. Because the Cumans have a bonus which allows them to go for Siege Workshops in the Fuel Age already, he could have gone for that as well. And then uh, go for a defensive Magonel, then as soon as he got to the Castle Age without having to wait for the Siege Workshop to come up. However, he does have two stables. We have Step Lancers coming out, and MBL's coming in with the Monks. He's gonna try and smash the Lord. 
And can you beat Divinity with religion? Well, MBL is gonna be the one to try. And we'll be the ones to find out. Let's see. That's got some of the step lancers over here. It's gonna be careful. Lois has got only four. MBL's got three monks over here. If he managed to get even two conversions, that'd be very rough for doubt. So I would like for uh, the red player to try and hold on over here at the very least until he gets seven, potentially eight. Eight would be ideal as well because with eight, even if we got all conversions over here, uh, doubt teams will still overwhelm. NBL's defenses, right? So let's check. There's tables coming up over here for doubt. Gonna keep on converting. He cannot keep on collecting. Stone. But here he comes and he gets the monks. But the conversions connect and in the end, it's going to be three step lances remaining only from doubt. And the army count over there was not the best. Miel. Not even going for the pikeman upgrades, bringing another monk over here, but now that's going to realize about this one. Takes the monk down. And MBL's push is starting. To run out of steam over here a little bit, and doubt. Doubt's got wheelbarrow. Let's take a look. Yeah, we have the extra TCs coming up for MBL. Well. It's gonna play catch up now. But this should put that in a much better position. He has a wild, wild worker lead over MBL. About 25 right now. And it's not going to be the end of it. Hey, Bubuk here. Welcome. We have a lot of extra step lancers. Coming in over here from Doubt and MBL. Have they really walled this? I'd love to see this from Doubt though. He's gonna try to breach through and MBL is gonna try and go for the walls. Let's see if Doubt can make it work. Oh! The stone walls are coming up here. Yeah, just in time and Doubt cannot do anything. Good defense, good reaction for MBL. In any case. Yeah, now that should be able to clean this up and MBL is going to be left behind by so much. It's going for redemption right now, trying to go after the Step Lancers, trying to go after the Magnet over here once he finishes researching redemption. Right now, it's only on the way though. There we go, nice shot and here come the Step Lancers. In the end, we see several of the conversions actually connect, but it's not going to be enough. And the Step Lancers will end up cleaning these units up. They should be able to. We have only Spearmen over here, not even Pikemen. And the monks are going down and everything's getting completely wiped out from MBL, who falls behind right now to 55 population. Almost no military in the huge villager deficit, which leaves that in a much better spot. And we'll love to see the red player go and start collecting some of the stone again, while MBL and is gonna have to be extremely careful. This isn't lie, right? These games are recorded games, the commentary is live, I could not cover, th this was actually supposed to be cast yesterday, but I couldn't cover it yesterday, so I am doing it now. Anybody who might have already seen these games, of course, uh, restrain from spoiling, from spoiling the series, but the replacement qualifier basically determines a priority list of runner-ups who didn't directly qualify into the main event to fill in in case one of the directly qualified players could not at attend. And, and we know by now the two players who made it through the direct qualifier, the main qualifier, right, are not going to be able to attend the event. And those players are going to be Mr. Yo and Vinchester. So we have two spots to fill and three players over here duking it out. There's gonna be a group stage as well, which means that MBL is gonna be facing Doubt now. Then we are going to have Jordan versus Doubt and Jordan versus MBL. So everyone's gonna be facing everyone else, and that's going to establish a ranking, a runner up, so to say. There we go. How did MBL manage to get two relics? Sneaky boy, he is. He was the one putting pressure earlier, so he had a little bit of time to work with, right? But in the end, he won't be able to collect them all. He knew the monks forward as well, so it was 
It was always going to be difficult. And that, that has put himself in such a good spot. And this is what I was talking about, remember. When that takes advantage of his stronger economy to go up to the Imperial Age earlier and take advantage of the technology lead, that's when Doubt's, um, you know, position is really going to, is really going to be the best it, it can be. Who are they replacing now? I believe it's Winchester and Mr. Yo, who made, you know, who made it through the original qualifiers and won't be able to attend the event in the end. So there are two spots over here left to fill. Um, I just want to take a look at the Wikipedia page. There we go. MBS calling the GG over here. He knows. He knows. He he's played against humans before. He knows exactly what's coming his way. So I just want to take a look at the Wikipedia page because it's going to spoil me the results, and I I, I want to cast all three series. But uh, after casting the sets, I will take a look at exactly what the list of participants for the main event is looking like. But it is my understanding right now that Vinchester and Mr. Yo are the only players who won't be able to attend the main event. So two of these players, the three that we'll see playing today, are to make it into the main event to fill in instead. Let's take a look. Cast percentage for MBL, I assume. Yeah, yeah, he was going to get this up for sure. He had villagers over here. He had more than enough villagers to get the castle out. The problem is that he was crumbling. And he didn't really have anything to defend against the step lances over here on the back of his economy, for instance. Just the TCs. So. We'll see for military. A very nice KD for doubt. Approaching 5-2. to two. For economy, we have a stronger economy for doubt in the end. It's going to be about 10,000 extra, 10, extra resources. Go figure. And then for society, we have a stronger villager count for doubt, not only for the maximum villager count, but also for the villager count at the end and the total amount of villagers produced. He ended up losing about three villagers this game. Meanwhile, um, on the other hand, we see about 15 villagers going down for MBL so far throughout the game, right? We take a look at the APM, we'll see. A little bit faster gameplay over here for MBL, but he did not get too far ahead compared to Doubt, so the red player was able to keep up over here. Kind of shattering everyone's preconception of Doubt being particularly slow, right? Well, at least for this game, we'll see in games number 2, 3, potentially 4 and 5. Let's go back. We are in game number 2 then. Let's go. To anybody watching live, once again, sorry about the technical issues. I'm not exactly sure what the cause of it was. I did a bunch of things while the stream was down to try and mitigate it. And it seems to be working now. This is much, much better right now. So, uh, sorry about that. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's just going to come straight after game number one. So you don't have to worry about a thing. But yeah, let's take a look at the uh, civilizations we get for game number two and the map. It's gonna be Bohemians for MBL, who is playing down the south over here. And this is why I said in between the games, okay, he had Bohemians. If he didn't use them on Ravia, it's because he's gotta have Ring of Reeds. And he did have the map over here. It's, it wasn't actually the MBL's home map. He chose Bohemians, and it was Doubt's home map, Ring of Reeds, instead. So for the civilizations, MBL's got with this one. Free mining camp upgrades on top of that. They they also have villages affected by fervor and sanity upgrades from the monasteries. We see for Bohemians a 100 wood discount on blacksmiths and universities as well as. Oh man, what is it? The other thing that they get. Uh, the Bohemians, they're going to have 25%. Higher bonus damage from Spearland units and access to chemistry and hand cannon on the castle age. There we go. The team bonus, finally, we'll see the Bohemians also get 80% faster working markets. While Doubt Civilization, instead, towards the northwest, is gonna have with Mayans one extra villager upon starting the game. Besides that, we also see Mayans get 15% longer lasting resources. They have 10, 20, 30% cheaper archer units in the Thiebo Castle and Imperial Ages. And for the team bonus, they get cheaper walls. So, yeah, there is that. And everything seems to be working out 
just fine right now. Do let me know if you notice anything unusual about the stream. I had to decrease the graphics quality of Capture H a little bit. Just in order to try and mitigate the GPU usage that my computer was struggling with. Yeah, and it seems by the day more and more apparent that we're gonna need a a computer upgrade in the future. Probably next year. Regardless though, everything should be working fine right now. The game should be pretty smooth over here. The audio should be fine. We should be live also. Do let me know if you can see the stream. But yeah, anyway. We talked about both civilizations. And uh, Doubt is already going to be the first one to click up to the fuel age. He's going up on 21 population. 20 workers. Well, MBL. Well, MBL is going to... Take a little bit longer to go up, but check this out, guys. Doubt is gonna try and wall MBL in. And we saw this in the past, actually. Remember? From some of the previous qualifier series. And it's not always been particularly effective, so MBL's bringing some villages out. He knows exactly what's up, of course. Doubt's palace walls are gonna be within MBL's line of sight. So here comes the bull player that realizes about it. Takes the villager away. And at the center, we still have a bunch of extra units for doubt compared to MBL. Yes, sir. There we go, right? So if doubt plays his cards right, he should be able to fight MBL off. There we go. Comes NBA with a few extra villagers. Still on his way to the to the village himself, and Doubt has gotten already up, and he's getting pushed away by Mr. MB. Archer range on the way for Doubt. BL still about 10 seconds away from the village. Oh! And the scout goes down though from MBL. Tower coming up now, just trying to prevent. Doubt from getting free access to the center resources, but Doubt already knows about this. It's gonna go for a tower on the left hand side to try and prevent MBL from going for any extra towers. And if we take a look at the range of both of these, they are not ranging each other yet. Whoever gets Fletching first is going to get to range the other tower. go and MBL is just going back while well, doubt doubt is still taking advantage and he's been the one to collect the, the center resources for the longest part of this game so he's looking very good he's looking very strong the archer going around we take a look at MBL and uh, if you weren't familiar with this map, we're going to have on the back of both these players a ring of water, which is rich in shore fish. So, usually you expect to see the players. If you do not get access to the center fish, you're most likely to not going to find your opponent uh, around the back of their base. So, that is why Doubt is sending the archers around, right? That's the second archer coming in. Now he's got Fletching on the way. And the great thing about this is that Doubt doesn't need to take villagers down. All he really needs is... Try to take, try to try to push the villagers away. And there we go. Shot it. Beautiful. Doug gets pushed away and BL's got his own archers. However, it's not too bad. The red player is getting close to having enough resources to go out to the castle age. Well, MBL on the other hand, well, MBL... MBL's been forced into farm significantly earlier than Doubt, of course, as the red player's got access not only to the center, but still to the very back of his own base, and he's 
Getting the fish over here from both parts of the map. Now berries from the center. Plus being the only player with a fletching right now. He's the only player able to target the other tower at the center. Things are looking really good for the bull player. For uh, the red player rather, for doubt. Not so hot for Mr. MB. Here we go. Yeah, that gets pushed away from here, but he has already been able to get a substantial lead over MBL. You take a look at the resources. He's gonna be the first player going up to the castle age. And MB, on the other hand, his defense over here was not strong enough. His offensive against Doubt was not strong enough. So it seems like he's gonna be the one to lose the tower. Once Dal gets to the castle age. Well, it's gonna be in a much better position compared to MBL. And there are a few things that Dal will be able to go for, of course. He's gonna have access to extra TCs if he wanted to. It's going to require some. Stone mining, of course. He's been collecting stone already. This is not too bad. Could try to make a play for full push. And against the feudal... Doubt can just dominate with whatever he wants to go for in the castle edge. He can go for crossbows and he's gonna dominate. He can go for uh, eagle warriors, of course, and he would dominate. So he gets cleaned up from the center. Now MBL starts pushing Doubt into his base. Second tower on the way now for the blue player. And that'd be about it. There's a tower coming in for Doubt already, and this is good from MBL in the sense that now Doubt won't be able to go for any extra TCs, but still, the possibility of going for Eagle Warriors remains, and Doubt's got more Eagle Scouts coming out as he's getting closer to the Castle Age. He'll be able to make use of these, then, to clean out the Archers from MBL once he gets the Eagle Warrior upgrade. Ideally, once he gets Chain uh, Mill Armor as well, now MBL's got a market on the way to try and... Balance his economy because, man, that is an atrocious economy if I've ever seen one. From MBL, completely out of whack. He's got to try and use the market to bring some balance to it. But doubt? Well, guys, he's managed to get enough stone to go for an extra TC if he wanted to. Now he gets to the castle H. But he's now on the way. He's got only three archers. But it's going to help the tower, of course, and... Got only three Eagle Warriors, and I don't see any extra barracks coming up for Dao, so it doesn't seem to be thinking of going for full aggression either, but the defense tower on the right hand side is coming out to try and prevent MBL from reaching in over here. And to be honest though, the bull player wouldn't really be able to do too much. If Dao was ever able to afford the Eagle Warrior upgrade, doesn't even need chain bar and armor to take on these units. PLA charges honestly won't suffice for MBL, so it's to be expected that, that now the bull player is going to get cleaned up. Here we go. And MBL is kind of corner now. He's trying to get to the castle each himself. He had to use the market quite heavily. Doubt. Doubt's trying to come in. This tower's going down. It's no longer going to provide any protection. Now the eagles are getting to the base of the tower. They are going to battle this one down. And MBL is forced into a few extra walls. With the house foundation coming up over here. He'll be able to buy himself a little bit of time. But it's not going to be a whole lot as the eagles are coming in. Still eagle scouts. No eagle warrior. Does not seem like it's going to matter though! MBL, he needs to go for extra houses and this is such an interesting position. It's not the only point of interest around the map. Doubt also has some units down the south over here that were pushing MBL's units away. Villagers away from the fish. 
forcing an, an additional TC, but yeah. With the archers dead already from MBL and just the villagers inside the towers over here, it seems like the ball player is supposed to lose a few of these units, for sure, the villagers. Are not particularly high HP at the very least two of these. And there we go! Puck goes to resolve the tower! Injects the villagers and here come the Eagle Scouts! And Dal plays his cards right. Should be able to clean these up. There we go. Perfect. There we are. It's looking very, very good for the, the red player. At the very least, managed to get the extra TCs up a little bit earlier compared to Doubt. The red player got a second TC when NBL was going for the second one and the third one. The third TC for Doubt came in a little bit later and NBL doesn't seem to be giving up over here as Doubt doesn't realize the power of the villagers going down to the archers. NBL is able to get a few over there. But this is not the end of the pressure from Doubt against NBL. Now we have a four tower coming up. So far, so good. For the red player still. Doesn't seem like NBA will be able to do anything about this castle coming up, so... Despite the fact that NBA was the one to get the extra TCs up a little bit earlier, Doubt is gonna be the one to put the most pressure over here. And he is the one still, with a stronger economy, and about 8 extra workers. Stronger military as well, with a few extra military units. go Shot it. now NBA is trying to get a counter push coming over here on the left hand side but that now it's starting to palm some of the pool archers, so he's got Eagle Scouts to work with still. He's got a large enough amount that will potentially justify getting Eagle Warrior, right? Will potentially justify getting chain mill armor. And NBL instead, NBL is making a play for hand cannon here. This is one of the things that Bohemians get to work with. Access game is in the castle age, hand cannon here. And Gamp other units in general are very, very strong. In ages earlier than they would otherwise be available, right? Such as hand cannon here over here. Uh, potentially even Janissary, sword guns, very, very strong units. Some conquistadors, of course. Even. The Hasa wagons. Doubt. Doubt's doing really. Really well over here. He's got a defensive castle up already. So that means Dimbiel cannot keep on pushing. 
It's going to be the out, the one to prevent Blue from pushing over here while he'll be the one still putting pressure forward. He's got a man over there taking villagers down, yes sir! Prince Castle now on the way for MBL, but he's coming in so late. He has managed to gather almost enough resources though to make a play for the Castle Age himself. There we are. Beautiful. There we go. Defense Siege Workshop now for MBO as well, but doubt. Well, that's managed to go up to the Imperial Age, MBL, clicked up a little bit earlier, however, the difference is not too big. And that's, of course, gonna keep on making the play for Archers. Now we have a hand cannon here already out for MBL, going for Eagles, will be kind of suicidal, so... That's just gonna try to stick to, to Eagles instead. Hey, Hawks! Hi, hi, welcome. Hope we're doing alright. Nice shot. Imbiel takes the mantle down. It's gonna be in the Imbiel in about 40 seconds. Meanwhile, Doubt's gonna have to wait 13 more seconds to get there himself. Yeah, and it's not too bad, you know. The difference over here doesn't seem like it's going to be large enough to justify, or actually to uh, compensate for the fact that MBL is behind. With only one castle, it's going to struggle to produce as much siege, but he does already have the siege workshop, and because he already had chemistry for the hand cannon in the castle, he can go for bar cannons right away. So this complicates things for Doubt a little bit. He does have two castles, so he could potentially go for two trebuchets, right? And he's going for two. But because he's going to be facing bar cannons very soon, I'm actually not positive that he'll be able to to keep the trebuchets up for the most part. Here we are. Trebuchets already out for. Doubt the Mio's got the Trebuchet in the Bombard Cannon. He's going after the tram and that's gotta be careful. He's bringing some villagers over to the berries, but he needs those to keep the Trebuchets up. I'm doing all right, Hots. Yes, yeah, MBL doesn't seem like he's doing too hot himself, though. Well, let's take a look. The Bombard Cannon over there. It does go down! To the Pulmon Archers, but still, Doubt is kind of letting this castle die instead. It's gonna go for one on the right hand side instead. And if we take a look at the point of view from MBL, he's got no idea. He's not going to realize about this until the castle comes up and starts targeting the TC. So this puts Doubt in a very, very good position because even though he lost the castle over here, he'll still be on two castles. It's just this one will be in a much better position for him to start putting pressure from the back of MBL's base. Where uh, the blue player doesn't have quite as many defenses, for the most part it's going to be just PCs. The 
The cast comes up. And now MB is going to realize about this. I'm gonna go down. Beautiful. Should you see on the way for MBL? Still the one behind in work account, and now third castle for doubt. You know, we still have a lot of extra hand cannon here coming up for MBL, so doubt spoon archer play over here is going to be very good. Usually, you would expect the uh, Imperial Age Mayans to go for El Dorado Eagle Warriors. In this situation, it doesn't really make too much sense for him to pursue that. But Pulm archers are going to provide a fantastic unit for doubt to play with as well. That should allow him to get. Much, much better engagements. For Trish is now for doubt. Biel's got two siege workshops on the left hand side, not really doing much of anything with those. See that marching forward. He realized about the siege workshops, so he's going to take these down, and then he'll march towards the castle. If he can take this down, it's going to put him in a much better position. Very good shots over here from Biel. Beautiful! He cleans out the pool archers. Fantastic. You want on the right hand side, that's pressure. This is already paying off. He sees going down to the castle into the trebuchets. The one trebuchet over there for Mr. Doubt. That's going to put MBL on only two TCs left in the castle. And because of the trebuchets marching on from uh, Doubt on the left hand side, he should be able to. Bring these trebuchets over and, and take these defenses down. Then MBL will be completely exposed, of course, now instead. We'll see MBL pushing very, very heavily at the center. He's coming in with hand cannon here. Bombard cannons. He's gonna drop a castle as well. Meanwhile, Doubt. Doubt's push on the right hand side, though. He's gonna have to make up for so much damage. He could take at the center of his own base. What used to be his base, as a matter of fact. And you know what? Doubt's actually bring the trebuchets over. He's gonna try to target the castle from here, and he barely has enough range, but he'll do it! He's targeting the castle from around the reeds. Miel needs to bring the Bombard Cannons, and he's got these over here. He's struggling for pathing. Now the Bombard Cannons are getting there. Meanwhile, the castle has already gone down to about half HP, so if doubt, is able to keep the trebuchets alive over here. We'll see, though, because the full notches are coming up over there. They are going to zone the... Bombard cannons out, and this is the most important thing for Doubt. He doesn't need to necessarily go forward and take the Bombard cannons right away. What he needs to do is keep the Bombard cannons away for long enough for the trebuchets to do the job over here. And they are going to do work. They are going to take the castle down. And MBL once again gets pushed back into his own base. He's going to have three TCs. This one did not go down yet. Be able to keep it up, but it's very weak and cannot really shelter any villagers, so still that is looking much stronger. If he starts putting pressure from the left hand side, he will be able to take the DCs and the castles down over here, but it seems like he's gonna try and make a uh, play for the center instead. He's gonna try and push. And here come the pull marchers. Doubt is going for a lot of skirmishers right now. Only hand cannon here for MBL. Good near control for the wool player, though, allowed him to actually zone the pull marchers a little bit. Yeah, but now skirmishes are certainly going to make it significantly harder for MBL to keep on pushing here. There we go. Fantastic. Really good. Yeah. This both travels for MBL. Drop in population, drop in military. For the most part over here pretty heavily down to about 20 military units. MBL certainly doesn't really have what he needs to defend against Doubt's push, which is going to keep on getting stronger and stronger. That is a big shot, though. 
From MBL. Yeah, there we go. But still, seems to be just peanuts. Just a drop in the bucket. A stout push over here. Keeps on. Marching on. We see now uh, Welch Javelineers coming out for doubt as well, and this will make uh, the skirmishers shoot two javelins at once, so effectively making them much, much stronger as well. So it's overall looking pretty good for doubt over here, and it's been the case for the longest part of the series, to be fair. Oh, big shots though! Oh, from MBL against that! Well, not just over here. I'm gonna go back and take a look at it for sure. In the future once again, and... Yeah, this doesn't seem like we're gonna have to wait too much to take a look at it again, because it seems like the GG... It's pretty much impending here. The lead pull march is only now coming up for doubt. Yeah, that's going to make it significantly harder for MBL to defend themselves. Good shots. We have onagers now. Yeah, and great shot against uh, the skirmishers, the pull notches as well. But still, you know, if that ends up taking any one, two onagers down over here, it's still going to be pretty good for him. Considering how expensive it was for MBL not only to go for this unit, but to get the upgrade to even get access to this unit. Yeah, and that doesn't doubt getting the majority of the Anjas down over here in BL. BL's got two left. He's got another one on the way. And that. Yeah, and that's gonna keep on pressure, right? On the right hand side, we have the Pool Archers down the south. We have Pool Archers, Skirmishers. Front, we have the Skirmishers as well for Mr. Doubt. Here we go. Nice shot! Good unit control from that. Big shot over there for MBL. And if it weren't because of the extra HP of these units, that probably would have lost everything already, but overall he's done he's done pretty well. And MBL MBL's staying alive for the time being. Now that um there are no hand cannon here anymore from MBL. Doubt might consider making a transition to, to Eagle Warriors. It's got an extremely strong economy, so going for Elite Eagle Warrior, going for Eldorado would allow him to obviously quite easily take on the Anagers for the most part, and shouldn't be too difficult to make the transition if he wanted to. He can use the market, balance his economy, but even if he doesn't, he's got a strong enough amount of workers that should be able to mass enough resources anyway, but not going to matter, guys. The Pool Marchers end up taking the Anjas down. As NBL calls the GG, Doubt puts himself 2 nil against the Norwegian player. We'll take a look at game number 3 coming up in a moment. But right now, let me just go back a little bit. Because I want to take a look at those juicy, juicy Onager shots. 47 and a half minutes into it. Around here. Check this out. Big shots over there. And bigger shots over there. And bigger shots over there. Taking a bunch of the Pullman Archers down all right. Hold well on. Big shots. But it's time for us to take a look at the achievements and then jump into game number three, of course. So let's take a look. For military, you have a stronger economy for MBL. Uh, actually, for military, you have a stronger military KD over here for MBL. Approaching 3 to 2. For economy, we have a stronger economy for that by a lot. About 6,000 extra resources. Besides that, then for society, we'll see. Actually, this is not 
100% accurate, right? Because we were not... Yeah, we were not 100% of the game through the game, but still, it's going to favor NBL. It's going to be a little bit better than 43 KD. We have a stronger economy for that. That's actually stronger than what it seemed before. Yeah, and overall, uh, that'll play this game really well. Once again, for speed, it's... This is not bad, man. This is not bad for Mr. Doubt. And here we are. We're going to keep the colors the same as they were before. Just so it doesn't seem weird. All right. Now let's take a look. Starting with NBL Civilization, he's playing with Byzantines on this one. We take a look at Doubt on the other hand, and Doubt is playing with Aztecs. For the blue player then, Byzantines will provide for NBL 10, 20, 30, 40% extra HP in buildings in the Dark Field Castle and Imperial Ages. Besides that, we also see for... The Byzantines, 25% cheaper skirm, spear, and camel rider units. As well as... What else do we get? Yeah, we're gonna see also for... MBL Civilization, 33% cheaper Imperial Age cost. They have a bonus. Also for... For fire type ships, right? But he's not gonna be he's not gonna be making use of that at all. And by the way, I don't know. I'm I'm sorry that I seem a little bit out of it. I was a little bit distracted because once again I was having some system issues over here. And I think I think I think I think I might have found out what the issue was. Not 100 percent sure, but it seems to be the case that. A sneaky program in the background was wrecking all sorts of havoc. Anyway, we talked about the Byzantines for the most part. They also get uh, free town watch, free town patrol, which is also very good for the team bonus. Their monk units will heal units 100% faster. While for Mr. Doubt over here playing with Aztecs, Aztecs on Land Madness, Aztecs again against Byzantines on Land Madness. This is very interesting to see. That's gonna play with Essex, which means three extra resources the villagers can carry for free. On top of that, he also has five extra HP on monks per each technology research from the monastery. We're gonna see also military units training about 11% faster, except for monks specifically. And then on top of that, the Essex also get for the team bonus 33% faster goal income from relics. As well, which also boosts their economy quite a bit. If you end up collecting three relics out of five, that is already going to give you as much gold as having four relics for any other civilization. There we are. Village is coming up for both these guys, and we are expecting to see it's likely MBL perhaps put the most pressure over here. By the way, if that was the issue, let me see if I can if I can do something over here. I'm gonna try to bring the annotations back, alright? Let's see if it works. Let's try analyzing MBLs. Map generation. Taking a look at the blue player. Oh wow. Yeah, <laughs> it seems to be working just fine. It's 
Scout one, go forward. Okay, okay, that's a little bit too black of an outline. I'm going to fix that. And then we have a stone over here on the back. Okay, and the annotations do not seem to be wrecking havoc on my GPU anymore. So maybe, maybe that little program in the background was the cause of all my issues. Hmm. Seems to be the case. Sorry that I am testing these things live as opposed to doing it off stream, but unfortunately, the system usage when just taking a look at the the scenes offline is not the same as when actually streaming. So this is about the only time that I get to to truly test the system tools, I'd say. After some issues with Twitch, I'm from the back. Hey, Fluffy Bunny, what happened? I hope you're doing alright. I hope you're back to stay. I was having some issues myself, not with Twitch, uh, Twitch necessarily, mostly with my system. But now it seems like we are in a, a little bit of a better position, thankfully. There we go. Yeah, alright. <laughs> okay, okay, Fluffy Bunny. No problem. Welcome back. It's good to pack, in any case. And Biel is the first one to start putting pressure. He's bringing the heat over here. This is a very, very common thing to see with Byzantines. A full trash production. You go for an archer range. You go for spearmen. You go for skirmishers. And because you pay so um, much less for them compared to other civilizations, you're usually in a pretty alright spot. Meanwhile, Doubt, on the other hand, is going for Eagle Scouts. It takes forever, though, for the Eagle Scouts to produce in the fuel age, so he is waiting a little bit. He's got just three. And not even okay. scale mill armor right now, so doubt. But nay. Would certainly struggle to take an engagement against these units right now, but he's got some villages to work with as well. For sure. There we go. Yeah, and the red players should be able to defend themselves. Now uh, he's going for scale mill armor. Skirmisher is a spearman from MBL. We're not going to be strong enough over here anymore. And ideally, Dow will want to go for forging as well. Market's in the way, alright. And MBL. MBL, MBL hasn't really gone for too many extra units. He's produced just a, a little army over here, about 11 units, right? And that'll be about it. The, for the most part, then, he spent the rest of his time just trying to mass enough resources to make a play for the Castle Age. Meanwhile, Doubt's bringing the Eagles forward, and MBL already had vision of it. So notice the bull player is going for the walls already because he knows exactly what's coming up, and Doubt's units... Doubt's units are going right back. As MBL was trying to put pressure up in the north. Doubt. Still kind of undecided as to what to go for now. He turns around. And so starts heading south once again. Because if you uh, visit them fuel each, make every trash impossible. And be in such a good spot here, I feel. He is looking very good. He's going to be the first player to go up to the castle age and doubt. At the very least, he's not really taking too much damage over here. Uh, actually, he's not taking damage at all. He's lost one military unit, right? But he's not lost a single villager, for instance. So his economy is just fine, and he should be able to click out to the castle age himself. Pretty soon, too. Oh, but it's open! It's open, and this is huge! No doubt, trying to go around. Taking the villages, but MBL's done a really good job reacting to this, and I can't help but feel like that probably would have been better off just splitting his army up and sending just a few of the eagles around to try and catch the villages off guard. But in the end, MBL would most likely have uh, been able to get the walls up anyway. And in the end, there's only going to be one villager over here exposed, but because that does not have forging, these units are not the strongest, and you can see just how long it takes to take a single villager down, even with a fairly Strong army of Eagle Scouts. Once we get to the Castle Age, of course, our teams will be significantly stronger compared to what they are like right now. And MBL 
Well, Emil will still have a head start to the Castle Age. He still has a good amount of resources to go for extra TCs, and because of the extra HP from uh, from the Byzantine civilization, Emil could just try and play full defense and go for some trash to keep on putting some pressure. So yeah. Well, do Astex make versus Cataphracts? Monks? You can go for Arbalisters. Can be pretty effective. Monks can work too. Uh, monks are pretty good. Arbalisters are alright. Cataphracts are not the highest Pierce armor. Cavalry type unit, so... Always archery can be pretty effective. Scammel armor is coming in for MBL. They miss, yeah, they, they do miss stammering. Arbalists are still pretty good though. They still have all their their attack. They just don't attack quite as fast. This cast is on the way for MBL, no extra TCs. He was collecting stone pretty heavily, so it makes sense. Beautiful push from Doubt. He's getting the Eagle Warrior upgrade right now. Chain. Mail armor as well. And if MBL is going to stick to skirmishers. And Pikeman, well, we know that it's not going to spy, so there is a reason he went for the castle over here, and we see it in Kyr right now, and it is going to be Cataphracts. However, Doubt's got the monks coming out, and the problem for MBL is that Cataphracts will need castles, and he's got just the one. If he's going to be going for one Cataphract at a time, that's not really going to struggle to get enough monks out, especially now that he's got triple monastery. Doubt is going full clown over here in MBL. Doesn't seem like he'll be able to hold on against this, after all doubt. He's gonna be able to produce out the three monks at a time. And he can get the conversions against, against Cataphracts just fine, right? So, MBL is under a lot of pressure, and he was looking stronger just a few minutes ago, but now... Tables have turned, and doubt. It's definitely the one putting the most pressure over here, it's definitely the one dictating the pace of the game. The one calling the shots in MBL. Well, MBL is gonna have to play defensively over here. It's gonna have to play reactively as well. Here come the Eagles! We have the monks over there. Love to see it. And the monks going down. Good amount of skirmishes from MBL. I uh, doubt. It's got sanctity already. Yes. He's got. Fervor, but MBL, yeah, still has enough skirmishes over here to one-shot the monks. However, that's not going to be enough once we get the mana coming out from Doubt, though, and it's about 90%. There we go! Man, it just seems so much faster. It, it, it's just 11% faster trading military units, but it just seems so much faster. Just because of the progression bar moving faster than what you're used to. Let's push over here, no doubt, with Chainmail Armor, Eagle Warriors, Squires coming up! Should find himself in a pretty good position to take the tower down, potentially go after the TC afterwards. He's going to need more than one mana for that, though. So he's going for the second one. Monks vs. Cataphracts, I swear I'm secretly a pro player. Yeah! <laughs> That's the way it goes. There we go. Another tower is going down, and Biel keeps on getting this place further and further from his economy, though. How is this live when MBL is playing versus Mr. Yo? Well, this is not live. <laughs> that is the explanation. And the conversions come up over there. Big shot! From Doubt. There we go. And so far, the red player is looking the strongest over here. Is the only player with an extra TC as well. 
So yeah, this is not like uh, these are recorded games. We had these games take place yesterday. Unfortunately, I was not able to cover these when they originally were made available. So I'm covering them now. And also for anybody who, yeah, yeah, these are recorded games. For anybody who might not have been able to to catch these games yesterday when they were originally broadcast in the main stream for the Grammarly as well. I don't know if you were around. If you were not, well, this is your chance of watching the games alongside everybody else. Now I look like a fraud. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say anything, but uh, you said it. JK, of course. These were actually the only games that took place live yesterday. The two series that we still have to cast, Jordan vs. Doubt and Jordan vs. NBL, which we're going to cast after this series, those were cast using Record the Games yesterday, of course, they were made available uh, at the same time on, for all the channels, of course. Look at the village, uh, village difference, it's pretty substantial. And the military count is higher for doubt as well, so he's got an advantage no matter how you slice it. In every single regard, regard he's looking so much stronger. Kick. Yeah, with the extra TCs, now doubt puts himself in a position where he's never going to fall behind in the economy and... You know, uh... For military, he's looking so much stronger over here as well. Beautiful. Okay. Another tower comes up over here for MBL, but it seems just to be catching up. I'm not even catching up, he's just trying to prevent crumbling against Dal, but the red player is looking too strong over here. Let's take a look though. There we are. The Eagles are coming in. We have only two monks over here. For MBL, in doubt, that still has a bunch of monks over here. It's got five monks left to make use of. Only about four cataphracts, so that could potentially convert the entirety of MBL's cataphract army. Blue player is finally going for the second PC, but he's cornered. He's cornered in doubt. Pressure over here is looking so good. Let's get into the next tower. He's got three manos to work with, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Now we see the conversions coming up. And he gets the Magnil. Now Dalt's going after the Cataphracts. Two conversions over there. Beautiful from MBL. He buys himself some time over there. But still, in the end, Dalt's gonna keep on pushing. Because now that the monks have utilized their faith from MBL. What is he going to do against Dalt team as well? The skirmishers over here are still doing pretty alright, I'll tell you. Skirmishers will get kind of zoned out by the Eagle Warriors. But this is not the end of it. Even if Dow got cleaned up over here, he still has on the right hand side. Another push. More monks. An extra siege coming out. But given his much stronger economy, he doesn't even need to keep on playing for the Castle Age anymore. He can just wait a little bit. And if you take a look at this economy, actually if he uses the market, then he does. Should be on his way to the Imperial Age very soon. And that will put him in a very, very favorable position against MBL. More so than his current position against the bull player. All this to convert the tower? Nah, he was just going underneath it, but in the end he cannot... He can't even get that one. <laughs> and Imperial Age is on the way for doubt. He's got a four castle coming up. Let me take a look. He actually does not have redemption, so he cannot convert the tower. He only has Sanctity and Fervor. That is also why when he had his Magnus converted by MBL, he didn't try to go for the counter conversion. Origin finally coming up. Doubt's gotta go for iron casting. Ideally, Garland Wars. Here comes a BL. Oh, man. 
Beautiful. Good amount of eagles over here. A fairly small amount of cataphracts from MBL. Yeah, small enough that Doubt's actually not afraid of the army too much. Plus, he can potentially take advantage of the hill over there. Doubt's unit control of this game has been overall pretty alright. There were a few rough moments, right? Especially on the left hand side over here with the monks and uh, uh, eagles and magnets over there. Those are the majority of his units. But still. He's not looked too bad, these series too much. MBL is on his way to the Imperial Age, but Doubt? Doubt's there already in MBL. MBL, he needs to keep on trying, man. This is the best of five. Series. Which means MBL's only way to take the series over here is going to be getting a uh, reverse sweep against Doubt. Yeah, I would say for the most part, that's done a, a really good job. With this army, bearing just a, a few missteps on the left hand side. He does find himself in a much better position, he's got the first Torishay out already. So Torishay is coming out before NBL even gets to the Imperial Age, and because the bull player has got a single castle plus, the fact that Doubt's got the hill advantage to work with over here, tells me that NBL actually does he have the hill advantage, I think this castle might actually be on uh, an elevation. Still though, B engagement coming up right now, the cataphracts are heavily outnumbered and the Eagle Warriors are coming out on top and MBL, despite having a very strong unit, fight against uh, infantry over here, does end up crumbling, he's got only one cataphract left and doubt, well doubt, guys he already has elite Eagle Warrior and MBL doesn't want to keep on trying anymore, the GG is coming up. As Doubt takes game number three, he's gonna get a clean sweep against MBL. Doubt's gonna be the one moving on. Thus, to the second series over here with a with a point already. This is a group stage, so everyone's gonna be playing against everyone. Now Doubt took an MBL. He's going to take on Jordan, and we could potentially see. The other way around as well, uh, MBL take on Jordan, I'm actually not really sure what the second series is going to be. Let's take a look at the achievements over here before hopping out and waiting for the second set. Better KD for MBL in the end, doesn't matter if you take a look at the economy, doubt, and love collecting, well over 50% extra resources. Uh, yeah, compared to MBL, so he compensated for the less than ideal KD by just being able to go for more units. So well done. Dot three and BL nil.